This week, we're gonna take a look at an XR10, the Wi-Fi Express, and a little bit of timing talk. As the question came up, uh, how the timing works, there's a turbo timing, then there's boost timing, and there's probably six or seven settings. So we're gonna take a look at just what those settings do, as well as you know some basics on how to use the Wi-Fi Express. So I have an XR10 Pro 160 here. This is connected to a five-turn uh, G3 motor that I actually ran at the Reedy Race. And my Wi-Fi Express is plugged into the programming port on the speed control, not to the receiver wire. And I unplug the fan just for the sake of us not having to listen to the whirring. So I turn that on first. And the light comes on, I can move that to the side and we'll bring out the phone. So step number one is to go into your phone settings, uh, go to your connections, uh, go to your, go to Wi-Fi, uh, and then select your Wi-Fi Express from the list. It's scanning and there it is, my Charlie Hobby Wing Link. I connect to that. If you don't know your password, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I have already changed all of that here. You gotta wait till it tells you that it's connected and that it isn't got any internet. And this one usually, sometimes it'll swing and a miss. So we try it again a second time. And this time, hopefully, it'll connect to the Wi-Fi. And that's more, I don't know what causes that, but sometimes it's awesome, sometimes it's not. You get that, uh, then you back back out of here and you go to your HW link. more notifications so look there's an update today as I do that fantastic so Wi-Fi is connected push the little speed control icon it takes a moment uh, once that's connected you can go in see the little sweet connection logos you go in there and then these are the settings that you have. And at the Reedy Race, we called this profile, hold on, because I needed to hold on for dear life. That thing was so fast. So we'll go through, and we can talk about what all the settings are since we're in here, but we'll stop when we get to the timing. So we'll breeze through everything, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the timing at the end, if that's easier. Because we don't want to, you know, if we're going to take a minute to look at these settings, we might as well talk about all of them. Running mode is real easy. That's where you turn on the reverse. Uh, max reverse force is exactly that. It turns your reverse speed up or down. Uh, voltage cutoff is for your LiPo. Um, ESC thermal protection, motor thermal protection, those are pretty self-explanatory. You have two settings or you can turn them off. Uh, BEC voltage is adjustable. There's two settings for that, six volts or 7.4. And then remote on off is when you wanna hold the brakes to turn the speed control off. And then you can change it from full sensor to uh, the hybrid sensor less mode. So if you are running motors with dirty sensors or noisy sensors, you can go in hybrid mode. And that way if something happens, uh, the speed control can still operate the motor. Throttle rate control is like your punch control. It controls how linear your throttle is. The higher that is, the more it's gonna be close to linear. And 30 is the highest, uh, tw zero or one is the lowest. Throttle curve, you can set customized curves and all that fun stuff, I never use that. Neutral range is like the dead band, the space between your first brakes and your first throttle. So if you have a janky throttle or your drag brakes are real inconsistent or your reverse is real inconsistent, you can turn up the neutral range to help that. Coast is like a run-on feature so that when you let off the throttle, the motor doesn't want to decelerate at all. It'll try to coast as hard as it can. And your PWM drive frequency is the operating parameter of the motor. So the higher this frequency is, the smoother your motor is going to feel. And with the new update, it goes all the way up to 32. Softening value and softening range. Now these are fantastic for all levels of racing, really. It helps take temperature out of the motor, uh, helps this, the, the, the speed control and the car be a lot easier to drive. So the softening value is how much limiting the speed control is gonna do out of a total range that it has available of 30 degrees. And then your softening range is gonna be how far into your throttle it applies that. So obviously we want current limiting or you know power limiting, if you will, at the bottom of the throttle. So it starts at zero and runs all the way up. At the Reedy Race, because I was running a touring car modified for first time in forever, I ran it pretty soft, as soft as I could. The, the range goes up even higher than that if you need to, but that, that's kind of where I stop. And what it does, it just makes the, the bottom end of the throttle feel nice and smooth. And even some of the spec guys use this a little bit to just kind of help take the edge off. A lot of times we click trigger so fast that your throttle is moving faster than the motor does. And uh, all that does is build temperature. So this can help with that. 
So that's what softening value and softening range do. Uh, drag break, max break force, initial break force are all tied together uh, with brake rate control and all that fun stuff. Much like the throttle, the brake has all those same things. So drag brake is your brakes at neutral. So when you let off, it's automatic brakes that come on. Max brake force, uh, you can limit the amount of brakes. Sometimes you have too much brakes that wants to lock up. You can turn that down here. And then your initial brake force. So in a situation where you want to tag the brakes and have it snap real hard when you first touch the brakes, you can make the initial brake force higher than what the drag brake is so that when it's in drag brake, if it's still cruising along at drag brake and you want, to, you want them to snap on real hard, you can turn up that initial brake force and that'll make it kind of rotate in a little harder. Uh, if you want a smooth transition from drag brake to push brake, you leave it at equals, dra uh, equals drag brake. Brake rate control, like throttle rate control, same thing. Uh, the more, uh, the higher this is, the more linear it is. And it, it tops out at 20, so that's most linear. Brake curve, same thing. You can make custom curves. I never have used any of that. And the brake frequency is just like the drive PWM frequency. Higher is smoother, lower is more aggressive. New one goes up to 16 now. Um, and then brake control, traditional hybrid and linear on here, because I've only ever used linear on all this stuff. Um, Boost timing, boost timing activation, boost start RPM, boost end RPM, turbo timing, turbo delay, turbo increase rate, and turbo decrease rate. Timing is a bad thing to use to describe this because a lot of people take that as like in an engine. You have to have the timing set a certain way for it to work correctly. In electric motors, the timing is talking directly about when the speed control fires the coil in relation to the, the rotor. So this is electronic boosting if you will it, it can overdrive the motor it can it feel like turbo it makes it faster than it is normally uh, and we're going to come back to all this at the end and talk about what all these are because this is a whole video on its own uh, and then we get down to the bottom and you can see your your data information to show you all your your fun info that was stored on your last run it does max temperature max motor temperature minimum battery voltage so you know how hard you pull it down and then your max rpm and then you can change your pictures and the name of the profile as well so let's get back up here and talk about all of this. Boost timing is the amount of timing it can apply through the RPM range. So you can have the timing come on while you're moving through the trigger and the motor's accelerating. Or if you're at full throttle and the motor's accelerating, it'll still apply the boost timing as the motor goes through there. So the boost timing is determined by the RPM. And it goes all the way up to 64 degrees. That's a ton of timing. We can talk about all that later. The, ter the boost timing activation, geez, spit on the screen. So to get it to work, we gotta turn on a little bit here. So let, let's let's just turn it up to 64 for giggles. So you can have it be automatic where the speed control figures out when it needs to apply that, or you can do RPM based. And you can actually program in the RPM where you want it to start kicking in and when you want it to finish applying all of the timing. And it'll apply the timing evenly across that. So in this example, at 15,000 RPM, it would start adding in one degree of timing. And by the time it got to 25,000 RPM, it will have finished dumping in all that timing. So 64 degrees across uh, 10,000 RPM type of thing is the idea there. So that's boost timing. That's used a lot in like spec class racing. I think some of the drag race guys are starting to get into that stuff now because you can, you can really hit the motor hard with a ton of timing early on. And some people love that. I'm turning that back off so that I don't forget the next time I run this speed control. Turbo timing is top end timing. So once you get to full throttle, it'll use turbo timing. So this is just after you're up to top speed or at least all the way up to full throttle, not necessarily top speed. And it allows you to go up to 20 degree, or no, sorry, check that. Let's, let's see, same thing. Way, way too much turbo timing is available, 64 degrees. Ooh, I'm gonna turn that back down to 20. Because this, I can show you all this stuff without, you know, the, at any setting. Put it back to where it was. So turbo delay, turbo increase rate, and turbo decrease rate, this is all how it applies that turbo timing. So turbo delay is how long after full throttle it, it comes on. So you have all these settings here, one second, 0 0.05 seconds, instant, so that it'll, it'll dump all the timing as soon as you get to full throttle. And that can be... It can be good or bad. Some people like it, some people don't. Turbo increase rate is how quickly it applies that amount of timing. 
So it starts the timing at instant or at whatever this delay is, if you will. And then how quickly it wants to apply that 20 degrees is your turbo increase rate. So that'll give it 18 degrees per one second. So if I have 20 degrees set in here, it'll basically take a little longer than 0.1 second to give me all the timing. And so the idea is there, how long after full throttle is it gonna apply that timing? And you can change this up or down to control the speed that it dumps the timing on. So six degrees being the slowest and then oh, and then 30 degrees being the fastest so you can uh, have it come in very very slow very very fast or you can have it dump on right away with instant um it just hammers the motor with all of the timing and then in the same regard the the timing affects how the motor decelerates as well so where the, the the speed controls applying the timing affects how you're gonna when you let off the throttle what happens to the rpm and so turbo decrease rate is there to allow you to have control over how quickly it removes the timing so if you're in a for at the reader race the, the the idea here was that at the end of the throttle we let off and we wanted the timing to come right back out to kind of act like drag brake so it would decelerate the motor a little bit as soon as we got out of the throttle versus waiting for the timing to come back down so if you need it to be real smooth when you let off the throttle at high speed you'll you'll run this a little higher uh, if you need it to be not the case the lower you run it the more aggressive the timing is going to come out and the quicker it's going to decelerate from high speed so there you go so there you go. there's a, a little bit about timing it's a lot to cover and like I said it's all overdriving or firing the the coils at the wrong time for what non timing applications is so blinky racing doesn't allow any of this and that's what blinky is all about is non timing racing where they're not boosting the speed controller using any electronics to make the motor faster different than the, the mechanical timing or end bell settings if you will that are on the motors so the higher end, like modified racing speed controls, the, the cars have gotten so good, traction gotten so good, tires have gotten so good that these guys are using some crazy timing settings now to really unleash the beast, if you will. And it works really well. Uh, in combination with the softening, it's very manageable. The It's a very natural, organic feel. There's not this big hard hit of throttle. Um, last night, I got out for some hits and rips with my no prep racer and I put an XR10 in there so that I could start messing with some of the softening and turbo timing as well as some of the boost and uh, it's amazing how much difference it can make so that, that's a that's a whole nother episode there but that's a little run through XR10 the settings Wi-Fi Express some timing talk as well and uh, that's just scratching the surface if you will so thanks for tuning in and listening to all that hopefully it wasn't too boring and we got the information out with too many uhs and ums thanks everybody